This is a big day for Collider Mailbag. Not only is it the second episode of Mailbag of 2019, but this is Dorian's yes. first show, and there's Cobster in the booth over there. This is, there is not going to be a single problem. It's going to be a seamless show. Dorian, how are you feeling? Are you I'm, comfortable and ready to go? I'm ready to go. I feel really comfortable. Like, this is my first mailbag. I've been here for about a, almost a year now. So, like, this is a big moment for me being on mailbag. I, I watch you. I mean, I have to watch it, like, every week. So, to be on the, the the back end of it is pretty awesome. Like, I get to read questions, answer questions. I'm pretty excited. I like how you hold mailbag in such high regard. It's, it's one of my favorite shows on Smart Collider Smart man so right here. Um, so, this is the show where we answer your viewers' submitted questions. We've got five of them. They come from an email address, Twitter account, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, do you want to explain that? Where do they go on social media? Yeah, you so do yeah, all the they, posts. Yeah, they, they uh, use the hashtag Collider Mailbag. We pick out the questions. They tweet them, Instagram, Facebook as well, and then we might even get on Reddit eventually, but right now, yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah that that, that'd, be be, that'd be pretty thing cool. But yeah, so we pick the questions from there, and then they end up on here, and we get to read them all for you guys. And we got five good ones for you today. The very first one is a Twitter question, and it comes from RNM1996, who writes, I worked out for 30 minutes today. Why don't I have abs? Ha ha. But seriously, any New Year's resolutions, and what was your hardest resolution if you had one? Hmm, so... What? My New Year's resolutions this year is like personally for me to to do a lot more vlogging and creating my own content on my personal channel because I just it took a back burner this past year so now like that's one of my focuses to just create more content put out more stuff that I enjoy like you like you 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 could do that a lot so I want to I want to do that more another one I don't see I I, I want to happen but I don't know if it's going to happen is me getting a gym membership <laughs> because I want to I want to train for the Tough Mudder because we're supposed to actually yeah we're supposed to be doing that soon mm -hmm. that's in a few months so I want to be physically prepared for that and I just want to stop looking like a twig like I, I look like the number one when I walk around so I want to actually get buff and and start like you know really training and then another one I have this is a personal one for me as well as being better at communication just all around just from not from my job to just my personal relationships with people and all that like if you look at my phone right now it's like probably about 200 messages plus so oh, I want to no. be better at communication just all around and and so people just don't think I'm MIA I, I can be like more vocal to, with people it's a so, solid list and right also there. and also to go to more movies because I yeah. saw I saw your tweet it said I like movies and it just had a bunch of movie ticket subs and I was like oh wait that's <laughs> incredible so I'm I'm inspired I want to go see more like more movies than the the ones we just go to like for press screenings and stuff but just going to see more movies in general I like that I, I so would that, probably have tons of recommendations for you. Um, I also have, I've got like the gym string bean problem too. Like even though I go to the gym all the time, I don't <laughs> think I'll ever look like the other people yeah. at my CrossFit gym. I will always be like a freaking rail with no muscle, but that's fine. I told you guys some of my New Year's resolutions on the, uh, the last mailbag before New Year's Eve. And one of the ones that pertained to fitness was gymnastics. Mm. So I like to, you guys know, I love to run and I'm pretty good with some of the weight weightlifting stuff, but I'm not flexible. I don't have, you know, the proper form. And they do this gymnastics class at my CrossFit gym mm -hmm. where it's just encouraging you to learn all the right movements. So I just want to make sure that if I'm working out like that, I'm doing everything right and healthy. And then also I had brought up the comment thing. It's very difficult to be in this chair and you got to have thick skin, but it's hard when you're just pummeled with negativity all yeah. the time. And there's a lot of it at the end of 2018, a lot of it that uh, was upsetting and that I didn't appreciate, but you know what? Time to compartmentalize, to continue doing what we love so much and forging forward. The new one that I'm going to throw in here, because I just bought the thing that'll hopefully help me make this happen, is have you noticed that I don't drink water? I mean, like, I don't drink any, almost any water. Now that I'm, now that you <laughs> mentioned that, yeah, I have, I, like, why? It's a problem. Uh, I don't like water. I, the, the morning hours are for, for coffee right here. I love my coffee, and I don't know, I just need a Do flavor. Do you drink water when, you, when you're working out and stuff? That's another problem. How? So I don't, I never drink water while I work out. And I think this comes from the fact that uh, when I run, mm -hmm. I don't like to drink water while I run because then I don't, f I just don't feel great in the middle of the run. So while I'm working out, I never drink water, but I will drink water when I get back to oh, the apartment okay. or something, but that's still not good enough. So I bought this gigantic water bottle and it's got markings on it that tell you about how much you should be drinking by any given point of the day. Okay. So my goal is the second that water bottle arrives, 
vibes. I am going, I'll still have my coffee, but I'm going to fill that thing up and I'm going to drink it appropriately. I'm going to have a normal amount of water like I, a human being. That needs to be, I, I need to add that to my list. I drink, <laughs> I drink a, a decent amount of water, but you can never not drink too much water. Stay hydrated out there. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to add that to my list. Mailbag has some health <laughs> advice now too. Uh, you want to take us into our next question? Yeah, so we have a, a Twitter question from Hawks. Holocrones, he asked, okay, picture yourself as the new head of DC, the DC film universe. Aquaman is the only DC film you have to come out with. Shazam is next. How would you personally build out to all the Justice League characters from these two movies? Don't consider past DC films. I like this question, and I also like it because I think what would come to my mind instantly is what DC is kind of doing, mm -hmm. which is narrow the focus a little, give solid movies for your for specific characters, and don't necessarily do the team-up thing before you have that foundation, because I don't necessarily think that's what ruins some of the earlier movies. Like I don't think that's why BVS didn't necessarily work, but I do think it's going to be in their benefit if we've got, like, one good Aquaman movie, one right. good Shazam movie, another good Wonder Woman movie, and then you kind of earn that... Because it, it feels completely different. I think that no matter what, let's say you have Batman and Superman, iconic superheroes, you team them up in a movie, no matter what, it is going to be an exciting thrill, but you add that extra layer to it mm -hmm. when you have that that foundation, that, that attachment to these cinematic versions of the characters, and then you have them join up. So I would say one at a time and build up to that. Gotcha. So for me personally, if I was the head of DC film, I would probably joke, I would release the whatever footage we have left of the Snyder Cut so fans can leave us, so fans and people can leave us alone. But besides that, I would also cast myself as uh, Virgil Hawkins, a.k.a. Static Shock, because I was meant to play him. So DC, if you're watching this, cast cast your boy. But but seriously, though, like if I was the, the head of DC film, I would, we have Wonder Woman 1984 coming out. If we're trying to build up to this Justice League, I would then go with, I, I don't know if he's, if he's like talking about the movies that are also in line, because we have Gotham City yeah. Sirens, which is going to introduce Black Canary. So you can introduce, put Black Canary on the team, and she'll probably, the, I don't know, they'll probably hint at Green Arrow in the Gotham City Sirens movie, but I would throw him in to ju just throw him on the, the, throw him into Justice League as well, because he's all, he's with Black Canary. He's always like, you don't you usually always see them together. So you add that in. You also, you, you throw in Shazam. He's going to be on the Justice League team as well. Who else do I have? What um, would you do with mainstays? Like, like especially Batman and Superman. Um, personally, for me, like, if you're, if we, if we, if we work out what's happening, with Affleck and Henry Cavill behind the scenes, you bring them back. But if need be, recast. Or I know there was some there was some talk about having you, you make Batgirl and Supergirl because they they're they're thinking about bringing Supergirl into the the cinematic universe. You make them the replacements. I know some people might not feel a certain way about that, but they can be your replacements until you figure out what you're going to do with Henry Cavill and, and Ben Affleck if they're going to come back, if we're going to keep them, or what what we're going to do with that. So until then, yeah, maybe like pass it on to Batgirl, pass it on to Supergirl, or or recast, or just not have them at all, and then you just have a, a completely fresh new, fresh new team that wasn't in the comics. And what they also should probably be doing is laying down the groundwork for Young Justice because mm -hmm. because because I knew these, you were going there. yeah because these these characters are so old and not old but just <laughs> just already battle worn down. They can go ahead and introduce like maybe in the Aquaman sequel you introduce Aqualad. We have a Blue Beetle movie supposedly in the works, so you're already kind of laying down the groundwork there. You can slowly build it up and maybe the next Justice League movie is Lex Luthor his secret weapon is Superboy because like, he gets he gets some DNA from Zod he gets some DNA from uh, Superman mix them together you got Superboy and that's a, the villain and by the end you know it's not a bad yeah. idea especially when you consider if the Joker movie this year is a big hit mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we can have that kind of like dark gritty vibe or really whatever they decide to do with that branch of the DC film franchise because the whole point of that I believe is to to do movies that cost a little less that let them take bigger swings and right. do different things so you've got all that and then you could have this young justice thing which to me sounds like it has a very distinct vibe compared to what I just mentioned with Joker but also with the team up movies we've seen before yeah and it, it, it's it's kind of you see what um, Marvel is doing right now with like the runaways cloak and daggers like yeah. it's introducing these younger superheroes for for kid for generation like me who like we know about the older ones but the, we were introduced to these kids when we were like at our when we were younger so it's like it'd be the perfect time to introduce start, start introducing these younger heroes because it, it's it's the time and people love 
Young Justice. They just dropped season three on, on, uh, mm-hmm. for on Outsiders. So it's like, come on, let's let's bring them live action. My new favorite thing is going to be to see how awkward conversations get every time you bring up a younger versus older thing. <laughs> I'm trying not to offend. It happens. I'm in the middle. It's fine. Yeah. I don't care. And uh, <laughs> don't forget, we gotta. We, they also have to bring back Cyborg and the Flash. I, I, they they. I don't know how they would do it, but I I need to. They have to be a part of any Justice League movie moving forward. I as want well. both of those characters to have their own standalone movie, in particular Cyborg. Yes. The fact that he didn't go on to, or at least at this point in time, you never really know what's going to happen, but it's like they announced that huge slate of movies and then it never really panned out. But even after getting Justice League, there were so many little bits to Cyborg that fascinated me that that movie couldn't serve well enough. But those to me are the pieces you need to make a, a, a solo film, not necessarily an origin film maybe, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, there's so much to work with so, Yeah, with Cyborg. And because he's being introduced on Doom Patrol in, in the DC mm-hmm. Universe show, it's like, I'm, I'm not sure what the future holds for the the cinematic version. I know yeah, we'll Ray, get a TV Ray ver- Fisher. Yeah, but I would love to see Ray Fisher's portrayal of the character again. So hopefully we moving forward w- w- with the good sign of Aquaman. We got Shazam coming up. Hopefully the DC is like, all right, let's just keep this momentum. Let's give like hopefully they find a good director for the the Flash because it seems like they can't land the or the like the director plus the script is not working out. So hopefully they can figure something out with that because it it, it does seem like they want to do the Flashpoint but they don't want to do yeah. it. But they I can use a Flash. Remember where we stand on yeah. that. Is it the uh, the game night directors that are still attached to do that? I feel like we haven't gotten a Flash update in exactly. a really long time now that I think about it. I'm not it. sure where it's at right now, mm. but I, I I hope they get it resolved. Well, who knows? If they keep the momentum going with Shazam, mm-hmm. maybe after that we could get, you know, a little more of a bird's eye view of exactly what whatever map or plan they have worked out, and maybe we'll get some more announcements too. I hope so. Yeah, as do I. <laughs> All right, next question is a Twitter question from Will to be Weird One who writes. What are your Super Bowl trailer predictions? What's on your list? So the first one, of course, on my list is I want a Infinity War. I mean, not Infinity War, Avengers Endgame mm-hmm. trailer because we got the Infinity War one last Super Bowl. Yep. So it would only make sense to give us an Avengers trailer for this Super Bowl. I don't expect a Captain Marvel, maybe an extended TV spot, but I wouldn't expect a trailer so close to yeah. the actual movie release. And I think hopefully maybe we get a, a Lion King trailer from Disney as well, a full full uh, full trailer for that and maybe if if they're confident enough in it a Wonder Woman 1984 I don't think we would get a trailer but oh, maybe maybe they show the the polished version of what we saw at San Diego Comic-Con like a, a extended version of that clip and just That'd just to nice tease touch, yeah just just to tease it or maybe give us a first look at Kristen Wiig's version of Cheetah like the 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 full CGI like version yeah. instead of just like a picture of her so something like that that would definitely break the break the internet for for DC and and I, I would love to see something like that maybe a Shazam trailer yeah um, and and maybe a Star Wars trailer that I would bet against. Or just I'm the first because we got a teaser of Solo at, we did. at, at Super Bowl. The release but. dates, though, are so different. Solo was coming out so True. soon after, whereas we have until December. I just have this feeling we're not going to see that teaser trailer until Star Wars Celebration. Mm. But who knows? I can be wrong. You never know. Maybe Joker then? Or, I mean, that would, you think a good a Joker trailer? I, I mean, that... I think that has risen to to the top of my my want list for that. I cannot wait to see some sort of teaser trailer, especially because when we got that the makeup test video, yes, that was easily one of the most chilling things I had seen last year, and that wasn't even an official promo for the movie. Ridiculous. So ridiculous. I can't wait to see what they come up with for that. But it's. It's interesting because I started to look at what came out last year and Mm -hmm. what specific studios put their money towards because this is one of the most expensive times of year to advertise your movie and they're only going to give love to so many things and last year for, I can't remember the grand total, but last year I think Disney wound up doing Solo obviously and Infinity Infinity War, War, but I think that was it. I, I, I don't think they, I, yeah, I don't, or maybe sure. A Wrinkle in Time had something too, but in, in trying to spread the love, or I guess spread the money, Captain Marvel seems like a must because it's the next release. Endgame seems like a must mm-hmm. because it's such a big thing. Then where, where do we spread the money in terms of these live action yeah. adaptations? It does seem like Lion King is the priority, but 
of Dumbo, Lion King, and Aladdin, it seems like Dumbo and Aladdin need a little more love right now, and that's the time to do it. So I'm just curious to see how Disney is going to spread the money around. And Shazam seems like a must for me. Shazam seems almost like a like given, it, especially because yeah. it's coming so soon after the Super Bowl. Prime time to advertise your movie. And then Joker feels like a little bit of a toss-up. I'm curious to know if they might use that as an opportunity to release a first teaser trailer or... Maybe they want to kind of let the dust well, yeah. settle and have the spotlight all to themselves. I I I think if anything, it, if they, DC was willing to do anything, I, I I feel like they're trying to. They want Wonder Woman to do better than it did the than it did in its first one. So I could see them putting all their focus into just getting out a first look of Wonder Woman because they they know pe the Joker's audience is only going to have a specific fan base and they're not trying to market to yeah. distinctly everybody. So maybe I could see them focusing well, also just on families are probably yeah. watching. Yeah. Super Bowl, and that could get everyone. And uh, also another trailer I could see them uh, doing or showing a footage of is Alita Battle Angel because that, it, it comes out February 14th, and I could see them trying to yeah. use that last that last little bit last, of last ditch effort. Like, yeah, get a little bit more promotion in before. Are you at all excited for Alita Battle I, Angel? Since I went to the the visit and actually got to see some of the footage, oh, I forgot you did that. Yeah, since That's actually, so I, cool. I'm really excited okay. about it just because I got to see like what all the hard work it actually took to yeah. do, like from the performance yeah. capture to the to them using a virtual reality camera and all of that so I'm excited for it just because of I, I know all the hard work that it went into it but mm -hmm. I could see for the average person who's just seen like TV spots it's like what's this about like it's it's I yeah. don't know so <laughs> I'm trying to be cautiously optimistic hopefully yet yeah, they they put in their lap whatever budget money they have left to to do something for the Super Bowl so they can get the as many eyes as possible to see mm -hmm. their, their, their last chance might be a smart move the one of the last ones I'll bring up at least is us because we got that uh, quiet place one one last year at the Super Bowl and A Quiet Place opened up and made a ton of money mm. so I think it would be a smart move to have an Us trailer play during the Super Bowl and also Godzilla King of the Monsters get another big franchise that it would be very good for the studio to do well so that seems like the place to advertise that to me any other titles you want to throw out? No that, that's it for me. So, do you want to take yeah, us to the question for? Next question we have a Twitter question from at Mac Z Goof he asks what is the first film theatrical or home that you are seeing this year and what is the first show you intend to watch? So the first movie I saw this year, I've already seen. Actually, no, it doesn't really count because technically I saw it in December of 2018. But I was going to say Escape Room, mm. which I actually really liked. Um, I think if that is your kind of horror movie like it is mine, I think it is quite satisfying and fun and has franchise potential that also excites me. But now that I think about it, what what is the first, I guess what's the first movie that I'm going to see in theaters? And... I wish it was, uh, I always say the title wrong, The Kid the kid Who Would Be King, the Joe Cornish movie, mm -hmm. but I believe I'm missing all of my screenings because I'm going to see, uh, to see family. Oh. No, I'm seeing family Ooh. in Florida soon, so I think I'm missing that screening, which would make Glass, I guess, my first theatrical experience of uh, 2019, which hopefully is a good thing. On the TV front, two priorities right now. I do really want to watch The Bodyguard, be, or just Bodyguard. I don't Bodyguard know on Netflix? Yeah. Oh, okay. Everybody that I speak to who has seen it is super, super into it, but I think the thing that I'm going to prioritize before Bodyguard is Killing Eve, especially mm. with all the Golden Globe nominations and Haley in particular has been telling me for way too many months, too many that I'm going to admit to you right now that I should be watching that show, and I'm like, I'll get, you know, I'll watch it a lot, and I never watch it. I, it's freaking yeah, time I've, to I've watch got it. A, a bunch of people have told me to watch Killing Eve also, so I might have to add that onto my. Oh, own but home. you know what else I have to watch? I told, I told you I'm going to catch Titans, up on Titans. Yes. The, the problem was I would have done it on my flight on the way back to L.A., but I can't download them. Oh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. They don't let you download them. Yeah, you got to catch I up. Know. It, I will. It does I up. will. I promised I would. I promised I would give it a full season shot, and I'm going to do it. So for me, if I, I guess the first, technically the first film, I wouldn't consider it a film, it's more of a video game, is Bandersnatch. Okay. That was, that's the first thing I got to watch in, uh, from home. But the first theatrical film I will see is Glass. That's the first movie I'll see in theaters. And then for t on the TV side, I, uh, the first show I'm going to be watching is Young Justice mm -hmm. Outsiders, as well as uh, The Punisher I'm prioritizing, because that comes out on the 18th, so I'm going to start watching that soon. But uh, another show I'm, I'm currently re-watching, but 
it came out December 21st, and I, it, since there was so much to consume in December anyway, I consider it a, a 2019 show, and that's Marvel's Runaway season two. The show is ridiculously good. It's it's so it's so good, and you guys should check it out if you haven't. But it's it, if you watch season one. It, it does have a little bit of in season one. It does have a little slow start, but they're just trying to to introduce the kids and introduce the parents. Season? season ten or season two is thirteen. Okay, that's that's more yeah. reasonable. And and th- and with this season, like you notice for, on other Marvel shows, there's like filler episodes. This season really doesn't have any filler episodes; just nonstop action. So it those are my meaning to catch up on. Those are my like main. Ones. I always look at the DC shows, which I was doing pretty well with for a while, but with what like 22 episodes, it just it became too much. I just I didn't have any time, and mm-hmm. then I fell off, and then I was so far behind that I felt like I couldn't catch up. And that's me right now. Like thankfully they put them all on Netflix except the current season. So I'm I'm currently like trying to go through the, the the DC superhero shows. The only one I'm like fully caught up on is The Flash mm-hmm. and Black Lightning and Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow yeah. is becoming a, like one of my favorite shows. It's huh. it's surprisingly like just so good for no reason. Like they cuz they have they have I guess they're not con- confined to anything. They can just it, it feels like they can just do whatever they want and yeah. they they like I, they have the Arrowverse crossovers and they have their own Legends of Tomorrow had their own like episode crossover and it, it was kind of it, it reminded me of Back to the Future that I I watched that that for the first time last year, so it, it, it was it, it was cool. I'm but so happy I love you that show. Back to the future. <laughs> Oh, it's about time. And, and and last year also because I'm really excited for Glass. The reason I'm excited for that because I watched Unbreakable for the first time like l- last year as well. Huh. So I watched Split first and then went back and watched Unbreakable. You can catch my review on Collider Live, but I watched Unbreakable and now I can see Glass and I'm all caught up and That's I know awesome. what's going on. That's what you should be doing. I'm so glad you're catching up on some stuff. Uh, we got one more question ahead yeah. today, and this one is an email from good old Jay Rushton who writes: If you look in 2019, what movies is Dewey wanting to see? The Lion King, Captain Marvel, and the musical Cats seem likely choices. If there, if suggest, if you have a suggestion, what other cat movies do you like to watch? So, Jay Rushton, we hear you. You're awesome. I love any question from the perspective of Mr. Deputy Dewey. What do you got? So my list is short. You can add dog movies too if you oh, want. Oh, I, 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 I wish I I feel like I only that. know of one dog movie. It's like a dog's Air way butt. home. I'm afraid to watch it though. No, I, that a dog's way home where the dog like finds its way home. I think that's coming out really soon. Actually. Yeah, I feel like they gave the whole movie away within that trailer. Yeah, the, well, the dog has to make uh, his way yeah, home. That's true. So for me, I just have uh, my list is really short. I have Puss in Boots, and Puss in Boots and, is a good one. And they're and they're getting rebooted too, so we might see more. And then my other one is Keanu. I don't know if that's considered a, if that's considered a cat movie, that is right? A cat movie. All right, cool. All right. I liked Keanu way more than most of the people too. liked it that I saw it with. <laughs> I don't know, but I yeah, thought it was a lot of those fun. are my those are my two. And if we're adding dog movies, I I guess I guess Air Bud. Yeah, those, that, uh, that's really like that's all I got. I'm sorry, I I'm I sorry, Jay uh, rushed in. I missed the Air Bud train a little bit. I don't I, know. Air Bud was never really my thing, but this year we also actually have The Secret Life of Pets too, which is mm. filled with pets. But of all of the movies Jay listed, I have to go with Captain Marvel. You saw that poster of the cat that came out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, I just want that poster to hang on my wall somewhere because I do think it's a beautiful poster, but I also really want Dewey photoshopped into that poster and I want that version to hang on my wall. So I'm looking forward to the Captain Marvel cat, but also Pet Cemetery Church. I haven't seen that. Um, okay, so you know what Pet Cemetery is? Yeah. Pet Cemetery is the Stephen King adaptation. I don't necessarily know if I would recommend seeing the original before you see the new Pet Cemetery, oh, but right. if you're into reading or audiobooks at all. I am not. Yeah, Just I kidding. Have, I, I, I do audiobooks sometimes. Really? Yeah, well, sometimes. Well, Pet, Pet Cemetery is a good audiobook, and I think it's one of Stephen King's shorter audiobooks also, between like 10 and 15 hours or something, but it's a great read slash listen, listen okay. if you have time. But Pet Cemetery is also one of my most anticipated movies of the year. It's got a great cast with uh, Jason Clark, Amy Simetz, uh, John Lithgow, and the cat in that movie is Church. And uh, okay. church, church, is, uh, church is something else, so I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, <laughs> I know okay. you don't like the horror stuff. I, d- I honestly don't. I would not see the the last horror movie I saw in theaters, and I wouldn't even consider it a horror movie. Is a Quiet Place, and and Wendy sat right next to me. You can ask her. It's, it's, it wasn't. It wasn't you a fun time. You didn't see Halloween. No, I, I oh, yeah. okay. That's on my list. I, I, okay. I'm gonna watch that. I, I, I guess I just didn't have time to catch it in theaters. Oh, the reason why I didn't see it in theaters is because I wanted to go back and watch like the original ones first. So oh, I, I haven't boy. done that. So I'm gonna do that first, and then I'll, I'll watch 
the new one. Literally. You should definitely watch the original 78 Halloween, but I will say that one of the things I appreciate most about the 2018 Halloween is I'm not super opposed to the idea of having that be someone's first Michael Myers okay. movie. So I feel like if you wanted to go watch it, I, I would actually be very curious to know if you went to watch that, how it made you feel about knowing more about what Michael and Laurie went through before mm. and then how it would change your experience watching the 78 version first. Okay, I might do that huh, then and say Curious. All right, that's it. That's all five questions. Uh, Dorian, congratulations. Thank your you. first episode of Collider Mailbag. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, don't forget to like and share. Tell everybody you know about the video version and the podcast one as well. You can check us out on Podcast One and iTunes. Dorian, thank you so much for your thank time Thank you for today. having me. You guys rock. We're out of here. Tune in tomorrow, Monday, 4 p.m. PT, for a brand new episode of Movie Talk. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.